Hey guys, and welcome back to a new video in this Spring Boot 4 Basics with Kotlin playlist. In case you don't know me, I'm Philip, Kotlin developer for the past seven years. I'm doing everything that we can do with Kotlin. My channel is full of Kotlin related videos. So if that is something you're interested in, definitely subscribe. In the last video of this Spring Boot Basics playlist, we've implemented our very first REST controller. So we can also take a quick look in the code here. In the end, we defined this REST controller in Spring Boot, our quote controller that was able to manage a list of quotes and then respond with these here with our get endpoint, properly post a new quote and add that to our list, update a quote with a put mapping, and lastly, also deleting a quote via the delete method. So at this point, you already know that HTTP responses have a specific status code. The status code can tell the client device, the browser, the mobile app, whatever makes the request, what went wrong. And we have also already changed the status code in certain cases here in our REST controller. So for example, here, when deleting a quote with a specific ID that did not exist, then we threw this response status exception with HTTP status not found, which will then respond with 404. And that's also what we can see in Postman. Here, when everything goes well, then we get this 200 OK status code back that tells the client, yo, everything was successful. But if we try to delete some kind of quote with some kind of ID that doesn't exist, then we will get this 404 not found back. In this video, I want to dive a bit deeper into these response status codes and how we can actually change these on the server side. Because on the one hand, in Spring Boot, there are quite many different ways how we can change these status codes. And also the way that I showed you by throwing a response status exception is not that scalable. So this is a quick and easy solution in your REST controller, but in growing projects where you typically also work with many different classes and parts of your project, you also want to be able to kind of change the status code from different classes that are not your controller. But let's take a look at it one step at a time. What you already know at this point is that if a specific function inside of a REST controller does not throw anything, so the function is just executed, there is no single exception that is being thrown, then the default status code Spring Boot will respond with is simply 200 OK. So the client knows the request was successful. However, what happens if there are actually other exceptions being thrown? So imagine our REST controller here for deleting a quote call some kind of other function from maybe another class and that other class throws, for example, an illegal argument or an illegal state exception within this controller. So here, for example, if we would throw an illegal state exception, what would happen if we would relaunch this and try to make a request here? Going to Postman, trying to delete something again. Then we will see we actually get back 500 and that means internal server error. So all HTTP status codes that start with a five mean there was some kind of server failure. And this isn't specifically the fault of the client. So the client couldn't have changed something about their request in order to not get this error. No, it was actually something on the server side. And that is the default error that Spring Boot will respond with if there is an exception being thrown server side, that is not a response status exception or not some kind of exception where you say this is the HTTP status code that should be returned for that type of exception. So this is something that you have to properly handle when having a backend because HTTP 500 is something that doesn't really tell the client anything. And it could still be the client's fault because it could just be that the server doesn't properly handle that type of error and detect that this is actually a client side error. But you tell the client, hey, this is actually my error. You can't do anything about that. And apart from this way that we've already explored by changing the specific status that is returned here via this response status exception, that is, by the way, something you can, you can perfectly do if you are inside of a REST controller. But I also want to show you two alternative options that are typically preferred. On the one hand, what we can do is we can explicitly return a response entity class. So here, for example, for our load quotes endpoint, where we also pass in a specific query, or actually I think the lead endpoint is, um, makes it easier to showcase that because here we do throw this not found error in case we really did not find this specific quote. What we can now do in Spring Boot is we can make the return type a response entity like this. So response entity, uh, what comes here as a generic argument is in the end, the uh, specific JSON structure that should be returned here. In our case, for this delete quote endpoint, there is no JSON that is returned. So we can replace this with a generic asterisk. If you would, for example, return some kind of quote here, well, then you would make this a quote DTO and then the response would be able to contain content in JSON format that is uh, in the format of our quote DTO data class we've created. But here in our case, well, our delete endpoint simply uh, communicates whether the deletion was successful or not via the status code that is returned. So we now explicitly need to return something here in this function of type response entity. 
And that is what also gives us this control about the specific status code to return. And specifically, there are two cases. On the one hand, if the quote to delete is not null, so it means it exists and we properly removed it, then here we know, okay, we need to respond with okay. And in the else case, well, we want to respond with not found. So what we can do is we can have return if, so we return the last line of the if and else branch. And then here we would simply say response entity. And then we really have a typical builder pattern where we can say, okay, we give this response a specific status code, which in this case would be HTTP status dot okay. For these uh, very common status codes, you can also have this shorthand of simply saying okay. And if you would now also additionally have some kind of HTTP body um, that would be attached as JSON, you could also add this here as a body and then simply um, attach your quote DTO here in this function. This is something we don't have here. So in this case, we would simply return response entity okay. And in the else case, we would say response entity not found or alternatively status HTTP status not found. So that would be equivalent. This is if you really need some kind of status where there is no clear function here. Uh, but as I mentioned, for not found, no content, okay. For these very common status codes, you have these uh, shorthand functions. If you need a very specific status code, then you can use this status. In order to then really also construct this response entity with this builder pattern, well, we just need to call the build function here and also here. Well, and we get an error because the uh, specific generic type T can't be inferred. We could fix that by either going in here and saying this is void, so just nothing, and then you can see the error goes away, or you would specifically uh, mention the type over here. Sometimes it just uh, differs a little bit from case to case, what kind of body would be returned here. If for some branches of your if statement, you would maybe return a quote DTO, and for some other branches, you would return uh, just nothing, then you could simply replace this with an asterisk or just return an object of type any. I will leave this as void here because void really communicates that there is nothing, no real body to respond with here. And if we now relaunch this, there we go. And we go back to postman here with our delete endpoint. If we now send this again, then this time we get our proper 404 error just as we uh, encoded it with our response entity. And if we maybe post a quote, so we say post, we want to post a quote, make the uh, endpoint quotes. And then here, let's just post this specific quote. We get OK. And if we then try to delete this quote again, ID is three. Well, then we can say three, make a delete request, send this. And then now we also get OK because that quote was found in our list. So that is one way how we, how we can manage these uh, different cases here and respond with the different response types. But what I actually prefer is to define so-called exception mappers or exception handlers in Spring Boot. Because in the end, it's quite convenient to be able to throw certain exceptions when something goes wrong, since that is just a, an inbuilt language feature in order to communicate that some kind of error happened. And while the previous approach we stick to here with throwing a response status exception, throw response status exception not found, while that was perfectly working and properly mapped the result to 404 in this case, in larger projects, you're not always throwing your exceptions directly inside of the controller. And yes, technically in Spring Boot, you could also throw response status exceptions outside the controller. For example, in your service layer, which includes things like business logic, talks to data sources, and in the end, just uh, orchestrates the logic that is needed to get a certain result that is then responded with uh, in your HTTP endpoint. That's something we will get to later on this playlist, how we can architect the Spring Boot project. But typically at some level of scale in our project, we want to have a quite clear separation of concerns. So that means we have different layers in our project where each layer has a very clear responsibility and we make these layers as isolated as possible. So one layer could, for example, be our API layer that handles all the incoming HTTP requests and decides about what the corresponding response would be. Another layer, as I mentioned, would be our service layer that really contains business logic. So the core logic of how our backend behaves the logic that in the end comes from your application's requirements. And if we would now throw such a response status exception in our service layer that ideally should not have anything to do with our API layer, with our controllers, then this creates kind of a coupling that we don't want to have here. And if this doesn't click for you at this point, don't worry, but I will show you an approach that I will really stick to in larger and growing Spring Boot projects. And that is by defining an exception mapper. What we want is here in our root package, we want to create a new class we call quotes exception handler. And we make this a class 
which we need to annotate with rest controller advice. So this is kind of an advisor for our rest controller on how to handle certain exceptions. And what this allows us to do is, it allows us to actually define custom exceptions. For example, a quote not found exception as a new class here in our root package. And then we can say, this is actually a runtime exception, for example. And we give this exception a, a message, a quote ID, and we could perhaps also pass in our ID value here in form of a long or quote IDs are long values, pass in the ID and we say not found. And what this exception handler now allows us to do is it allows us to throw this custom exception and then automatically catch that and map this to a very specific response type. And it, then it doesn't matter where we throw this exception, whether this is in our REST controller, whether this is in our service layer or somewhere else, the moment it's, it's thrown and it's not explicitly caught, the, the exception handler will map this to a clear response that says exactly what went wrong. So the client also knows about that. And this works as follows. In this REST controller advice, in this exception handler, we want to have a function that we call on quote not found. And this will get an exception as a parameter. So the quote not found exception. And what this then returns is in the end, the, the response, the JSON response, or just a response entity again, that should be returned when this particular exception is thrown and not caught. So technically, we could really just return a map off here. So with a map in Kotlin, uh, that is in the end how we could construct a very custom JSON object where we don't want to have a, a special data class for, which you could, of course, also do if we have a very consistent format. But we could, for example, say there is a specific error code and we map this to some kind of error code we manage here. So the client can just parse that and also uh, clearly know in a more or less a type safe way what went wrong. So the error code in this case could be quote not found. And we could give this a specific message, which we get from our exception. So e dot message. Now in order to uh, also instruct this function that it should be called for quote not found exceptions, we can say we annotate this with exception handler and specifically pass our class type of the exception that we want to um, make this, uh, that, where we want to trigger this function for. We can also pass multiple exceptions here. So you can see this is nothing else than a var arc. So you can also have multiple exceptions and then have this single handler trigger for these. And if we now do that and we go to quote controller and instead of throwing the, this uh, response status exception, we throw a quote not found exception with the ID for this quote and we relaunch this and then try this out in postman. Uh, let's actually also uh, remove this response entity here again. That is something we don't need. Then we also don't need to return anything here in the success case and just leave the return statement. So if everything is successful, uh, then by default, as I mentioned, Spring Boot will respond with 200. And if something gets thrown, well, then it will check if there is some kind of exception handler to handle this. If we now do this and we try to delete a quote with the ID something that doesn't exist, we send this. Okay, we get this error, you can see. We get quote not found, quote with the ID 123 wasn't found, but the response code is 200. Why is that? Well, because we didn't tell our exception handler what kind of status code it should respond with. So the default is again 200. If we go in here, then there would be two ways to fix that. On the one hand, we could of course make this function return a response entity and then explicitly provide the error code for this response entity. An alternative that in this case is much easier if we don't want to always construct these response entities is simply another annotation. So we can say, response status, and then say uh, what, ex what exact status code the response should have. So not found in this case. And if we now relaunch this once more, and we then take a look in Postman, try to delete this again, this time we get back 404 not found with our desired error body. And this way you can really just go inside of your exception handlers. I would typically create one exception handler per, uh, per REST controller. And for all kinds of exceptions that could be thrown uh, inside of this REST controller or inside the function this REST controller calls, I would just create an additional function here on exception type, pass in the exception, and then say this is the specific JSON structure that should be returned with this specific status code for this specific exception. And this becomes a very, very scalable approach because you have your own exceptions where you define when these exceptions change. And typically such exceptions don't change much. And you can really throw these from anywhere without causing this coupling of your um, service layer to the API layer, for example, that your service layer, for example, knows about which specific status is returned in which specific case. But this way, you have a very scalable and maintainable solution, very clear class 
to manage your uh, different types of exceptions. So if you enjoyed this, then definitely make sure to subscribe to this channel to also not miss the next videos of the Spring Boot 4 Basics with Kotlin playlist and see many, many more future videos about Spring Boot with Kotlin. Thanks so much for watching. I will see you back in the next one then. Have an amazing rest of your week. Bye-bye.